Hello, welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 3 of ADO.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about storing connection strings in a configuration file, reading the connection strings from these configuration files such as web.config and app.config files, what are the disadvantages of storing connection strings in application code, advantages of storing connection string in configuration files such as web.config and app.config. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 1 and 2 of this video series. Now in part 2 of this video series we have seen you know to connect to a SQL server you know database we we create the connection string first which is nothing but uh, a string of name value pairs and then we instantiate the SQL connection object using the connection string and then we prepare the SQL command open the connection execute the command, set those results as the data source property of the grid view and then data bind. And we are not closing the connection here because the using statement will force the connection to be automatically closed. We don't have to call that manually. Okay, So this using statement ensures that the connection is always closed irrespective of whether there is an exception or not. Okay, But then this, this code is properly written but there is one problem with this code that is hard coding the connection string in the application code. This is not suggested and it's not a good practice. Why? Let's understand the problems of storing connection strings in code. Okay, the first problem is, you know, tomorrow if I have to point my application code to another database, then I need to change this connection string. So, when you change application code, obviously you have to rebuild the application and redeploy that. So obviously building and redeploying is going to consume time. Okay, so that's one problem. Every time you have to change your uh, application database, then you will have to re rebuild and redeploy. You, if you're wondering wh what is the reason, why do we want to change the database to which my application is pointing, in real time, you know, constantly there is a need for, for you know if I'm testing the application the application code will be pointing to a testing database along the same lines if there is UAT testing going on then the application code needs to point to UAT database and when I move the application code to production environment then the application code has to point to the production database or if we are just developing it then the application code has to point to a development database so definitely there is a need for the application code you know to point to different databases and during that time we don't want to be changing the application code because that requires a rebuild and redeployment which is time consuming and there is another major problem another problem is let's say in my application i have you know maybe 100 or 200 web forms depending on the complexity of the application you have so many web forms now if i have to obviously if if i have the connection string hard coded on all the web forms like this then we need to change that on all those 100 web forms which is definitely error prone if you forget to do that on a few of the files just imagine you know some of the files will be pointing to one bit one database and another set of files are pointing to another database definitely error prone that's why you know it's a good practice to store these connection strings in a configuration file so if i have an asp.net web application then this asp.net web application has got web.config the configuration file and if i want to store the connection string in web.config file you know in the configuration section look at this we already have this connection strings element so within the connection strings element i can add a meaningful you know a connection string so give a meaningful name let's call this you know dbcs for shortcut database connection string and within your connection string all you need to do is you need to specify the data source the database name as usual the same connection string so I'm gonna copy this and then paste that in our connection string property here and then provider name system.data.sql client since we are interacting with SQL server the provider name is going to be system.data.sql client okay so we now have the connection string stored in web.config file so we can get rid of this particular line here okay so we stored it in the configuration file but we need to tell our application to read from that connection string so how do I tell my application to do that 
to do that you know in dotnet framework we have a class called configuration manager look at the name the name is also mean, meaningful configuration manager so this class is going to manage the configuration for my application so we can use that class and then read the connection string from web.config file okay so configuration manager let's use that class and if I try to type it, I will not find it here. That's because configuration manager class is present in a different name, namespace called system.configuration. Look at this, even the namespace is meaningful. Now I want to deal with the configuration from web.config file, so I'm using configuration manager class, which is present in system.configuration namespace. So import that namespace using system.configuration. So within that we have this configuration manager. So configuration manager dot there is a property called connection strings. Okay. Now if you just use this connection strings, it's going to return all the properties, all the connection strings, because it's possible to have multiple connection strings in web.config file. But I don't want all the connection strings. I just want a connection string that has got dbcs as the connection string name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that. So you can here either specify an integer index. If I use zero, I will automatically get the first connection string from this section since I have only one I will get this but then it's it's good practice to actually use the name so that you know which connection string we are referring to so let's call dbcs is our connection string name and then dot we want the connection string so I use that property so store that in a variable string connection string is equal to that one and then what we do simply use that as a parameter to your SQL connection object. That's it. We are done. We have stored our connection string in web.config file and we have seen how to actually read it from the web.config file. So if we press Control F5, what's going to happen? The, the, I mean, in the application code behavior, it's not going to change in any way. It's just that we have written this application in you know, in a good way, we are storing our connection strings in web.config file. So tomorrow, even if you have, you know, 100 different web forms here, and then all the web forms, if you're using database connections, then obviously you are creating this connection object. But still, since you are reading from one location, tomorrow if you have to change your database, all you have to do is change this web.config file connection string. I change the name of the server and the database. That's it. All pages are now pointing to a different server and a different database. And this is not error prone. You have only one place to change. And you don't have to redeploy your application because it's a web.config file. So you don't have to recompile. All right. So if it's an ASP.NET web application, then we have got web.config file. But if it is a Windows or a console application, then they don't have web.config file. It's app.config file. I mean, it's the same logic. If it's an app.config file, all you do is you specify, you know, the connection string in the same way and you use the configuration manager class to read from that. Let's actually open, let's close the solution and then open a Windows application. I already have a Windows application that we have been working with before. So let me open this Windows application, which again talks to the same database and then pulls that data. Look at this, even in this Windows application, we have this connection string hardcoded. We don't want to do that. We want to store that in a configuration file. And to do that, first of all, we need to have a configuration file. A web application gets web.config by default, but for Windows application, you don't get that. You have to add that. And to do that, right click on the application name, add, and then a new item and you can specify application configuration file. Look at this. And the moment I select it, look at the name app.config, click add, the configuration file gets added, and all you have to do is specify the connection string. So add name, you know, instead of opening, typing all that, I'm going to copy that from our ADO demo. ADO demo, you should have web.config file. So let's copy it from there. It's just going to open up now. Actually, we should have opened that with a notepad, which should have been much faster. Okay, here we go. 
So let me copy that connection strings node from there. I'm going to paste that within our Bendos application. Okay, so we have the connection string here. All we have to do in our code behind file is read that. Okay, so I don't want to hard code it like this. Instead, I want to read it from using the configuration manager class. Configuration manager is present in system.configuration. And let's use the configuration manager class as usual. So configuration, look at this. I don't find configuration manager in spite of importing the system.configuration namespace. That's because the assembly reference might not be there. So you need to add system.configuration assembly reference. And to do that, right click on, you know, the assembly will get automatically referenced if it is an ASP.NET web application. But if it is a Windows application, it doesn't get referenced, but you can add, always add that. So add reference. And then from the .NET tab, we will select the system.configuration assembly. So scroll down to system.configuration and then add that. So I have system.configuration, click OK. That assembly should get added. Now if I type configuration manager, you should see the class. So in the same way, configuration manager dot connection strings of dbcs is the name of the connection string dot connection string. And I want to store that in a variable string CS. Or if you don't want to store it in a variable, you can simply use this property directly in the constructor of SQL connection class and we are done. That's it. Now when once we run this, we are now reading the configuration information from web.config file. We don't have it hard coded here. Even console application has app.config file. So if, if your console application is interacting with the database, then use you know app.config file to store your connection strings. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C-Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.